innovation in property, I don't think we talk about it enough no. because with the changing market conditions, all the different challenges landlords are facing, it's really something that should be on every landlord's agenda. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more with you. You know, you, you need to protect your fundamental business assets as a landlord or as an SME developer or as a property investor, even though you may not physically own any property. You need to look ahead and you need to protect your investments. End of. One of the themes that, uh, you know, you, you, you're hitting on something that we talked about previously, Vanessa, but, you know, 15, 16, 17 years, we've seen so many people come into this marketplace and make assumptions. And, of course, there's that old cliche about ask you and me, assume, yep. don't take anything for granted. Um, and, and, unfortunately, too many people do. And, and the market consistently through every cycle catches people out because they're not looking ahead, they're not thinking it through, they take people and, and clever marketing and clever spin for granted. You know, there's some very sophisticated marketing people out in this marketplace. Uh, and, and, and there's also some, you know, sophisticated marketers who are quite unscrupulous. So, you know, and, and there are lots of areas that you and I both know uh, that, that people should be uh, giving a lot more thought prior to, you know, making decisions. No, I totally agree. And whilst property, you know, can help people achieve, um, you know, wealth and financial independence, um, by the same token, if it goes wrong, it can financially corrupt somebody. And this is again why uh, risk mitigation is, is so important because if a, something around property starts to unravel, it can end up costing thousands, hundreds of thousands of pounds. No, absolutely. Uh, millions, in, in, in fact. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. It, 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 people just, as I, I use that word again, assume, assume nothing. The market changes. Um, you need to look ahead. You need to understand what's happening in your local marketplace. You understand trends. You know, if we take, for example, the situation in in Swindon recently, where no doubt a whole group of landlords whose properties are in the Swindon area woke up on a Tuesday morning and suddenly found out that the Honda factory is closing yep. and something like 10,000 jobs you know, in the supply chain are, are going to be at risk uh, of, of no longer existing in about three years' time. You know, that's just one example of, of, of you know, the fact that you need to keep up to date with what's happening in your local market. You need to understand what's happening in the wider economy. Uh, and, and you know, from a business perspective, and I keep preaching this that to people, you're running a property portfolio or, or a small property development. You're running a business, end of. That, that is it, you're running a business. And you need, in my opinion, to think very, very carefully uh, about the forward picture and, and what what you need to understand and, and, and be able to adapt to, to changing marketplaces. And, and just give you one example, we've got a lot of people in and around the southeast area who two or three years ago thought that property development was a really good idea. Property development to sell and yes, great idea. In, if you catch the cycle at the right time, it can be very, very profitable. But now I'm hearing more and more stories of developers who have got caught out at the wrong time yep. and you know unfortunately they are unable to sell and they've got nothing like enough margin to cover and then, of course their lenders will be calling them to account. And that's also an issue in the crowdfunding space as well for developers that have been crowdfunding and are struggling to sell as well and again it's you know understanding the risk but also understanding what the plan B will be if it doesn't go according to plan A and whether plan B can actually work for you. Yeah so absolutely um, and, and so you always want more than one exit in your mind and I ideally have two three four four five depending on what you know the changing dynamics of your local market and where you are at so if all of a sudden a big student operator comes along uh, as I've got with 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 one of my subscribers uh, in in, uh, in the southeast, and you suddenly find that the local uh, university are going to be building 950 units one year and 1,100 in a few years' time, yeah. and you've created your portfolio on the back of that demand, which is suddenly potentially going to dissipate. Absolutely, I, I guess what you're describing there is a kind of black swan kind of event. Um, I think the thing is that you know. If you're in property for a long period, which is, you know, we recommend that you should intend to be. Yes, absolutely, um, yeah. You know, it is inevitable that no matter 
how much due diligence you do or how much robust tenant referencing you do, you, you, there is a, you are going to encounter a delinquent tenant somewhere down the line. Um, you are going to face a challenge somewhere. It's not all going to be plain sailing. No. Um, and I think, you know, sometimes landlords don't look at the risks. And for instance, you know, rent guarantee insurance, £100 policy, you know, landlords sometimes, yes, we're looking at our bottom lines, but, you know, you need to know where, you, where to spend the money in the correct places that's actually going to protect you. No, I, I couldn't agree, you know, couldn't disagree with anything you, you, you've just said. And I, I don't want to be too negative on this stuff. At the end of the day, we're in a fantastic business. Yes. You know, the demand is increasing. Um, as long as people need a roof over their heads, there's an opportunity to make money in property investment, whether it be straightforward buy to let, more complex stuff like HMOs, service accommodation, if you understand that that is absolutely a business, uh, and, and some of the other stuff that, that you know, development, etc., land, land and planning. There, there is and will continue and always be opportunities in property, but I just think the way that the market is now, the complexities of the market, regulation, and we had a debate earlier today talking about you know the, the, the amount of regulation that's been thrown at landlords and also the lending changes yep. that we've had to take you know accept in the last few years. You know, it, it is understandable what some landlords do feel now that enough's enough. But the you know the tax situation, you're running a business. Accept that you're going to pay tax. Um, just make sure your business is profitable enough so that you can pay that tax. By all means, try you know, and, and, and employ professionals to minimise your tax legally, um, but at the same time, accept that you're running a business and tax is, is, to use the old cliche, death and taxes. It is one of life's inevitables. So, yeah, yeah. I think also, you know, we're here at the Landlord Investment Show um, today and great to see over 4,000 landlords coming through the doors. And I think... Part of the mindset of, of a professional landlord is always looking to learn, always looking to grow, always looking to kind of raise their game. And again, that can protect you against risk. You could come to an event like this and, and learn one thing um, that really stands you in good stead. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I, I would say that many of the people in this room do have an open mind and are prepared and are curious and want to learn and adapt. You know, fortunately, my experience is, is that historically, too many do not do that. They 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 take for granted a, a, a business approach which has worked for them over 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, they don't upgrade their properties. They don't take into account changing tastes of, say, millennials, uh, and, and consequently, the market finds them out. Um, yeah, but um, no, I mean, this event today has been has been very very well attended. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for sharing those insights, Richard. And of course, um, one of the ways to learn and grow is to uh, read a reputable um, and high quality publication like Property Investor News. Um, because Pete, landlords can get inputs from so many different places now. There's really no excuse, is there? You can put stuff into Google, you can read magazines, you can come on forums. So much information out there to support landlords. Absolutely. I mean, there's a mass of information about you know, these days, whether it's print magazines such as ours, whether it's you know our website, your, 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 your forum, other sources of information. Um, uh, yeah. The, and landlord associations. Absolutely. Uh, the NLA, the RLA, the SLA, uh, uh, iHouse now. Um, these are all organisations that act on, on behalf of, of professionally minded landlords. And that is what I would always encourage people to think, think as a professionally minded landlord, whether you've got one property or a hundred.